In the last 24 hours, the Olympic news agenda has been transformed by a story that emerged yesterday, very late in the day, when a Belarusian athlete, Kristina Simunaskaya, was described as being taken to the airport against her will in order to board a flight back to Belarus. And the, the details of this in the IOC press briefing that took place today or yesterday in Japan are still very unclear. The story is still very much unfolding, but 80% of the press conference, which is an hour press conference, was taken up by this issue. And it covered a whole range of things from understanding the process by which this story unfolded. So what exactly happened that led to what? And it was partly precipitated by the fact that the athlete also posted a video online that described the situation she was in that raised a lot of alarm for many of the journalists that were there. Um, it seems as far as we know at this stage that indeed there was obviously discord within the team and particularly around this athlete's participation in the games. The allegation is that she was being then forced to go back to Belarus and worried about her safety when she got there. So was then seeking refuge in supported by the IOC um, in Japan rather than having to board the flight back to Belarus. So it's an incredibly complex story and you can see in a lot of the press coverage that's taking place and the communications from the IOC that there's incredible sensitivity around getting the story right. But for me, it just illustrates how fragile the Olympic Games is. We often think about this enormous platform of the Olympic Games as being a powerful, stable structure, but actually it's incredibly fragile and events can unfold in from one day to the next that just completely transform the agenda. So this is now occupying a significant part of the news agenda at the Games. And it goes back to thinking about, well, what is it the Games is all about? It's about bringing athletes together to compete in sports. And that already is an incredibly difficult thing to do because there are lots of ways in which discord may emerge either within teams or between teams that make it an incredibly fragile event. So far from thinking about the Olympics as this force of power, of stability, it's, I think, most helpful to think of it as a very fragile environment, an environment that can be transformed all of a sudden by an event that takes place that affects just one athlete or a number of athletes in a significant way. The Belarusian athlete is now seeking refuge and is seeking to be uh, considered to be a refugee fleeing from her country. So it's incredibly unclear that this will be resolved in a way that is either satisfactory to the Olympic Games community or indeed to the, the global community. I understand that Austria and Poland have offered, offered the athlete refuge um, following the Games, but it also speaks to the limits of what the IOC can do. And of course, up to a point, they can support the athlete in their well-being, their safety during the Games period. But after that, where is the responsibility? So I think when we consider what the Olympic Games gives and how much we expect of it to attend to things like major sort of human rights concerns and making sure that the platform is a, a space for people to vocalize their concerns about a range of issues in society, we have to always bear in mind that this platform could collapse very quickly with athletes or countries deciding not to take part. And that may be a risk that's worth taking for many people. They may think, well, if a country that doesn't have a good human rights record doesn't want to send its athletes to the Games because of that record and they don't feel that they're welcome at the Olympic Games, that may be a, a satisfactory outcome for many of the advocates of the transformation to Rule 50 that's been in the press over the last couple of weeks. But it's important that we're clear about that. The consequence of allowing athletes to manifest for politics to enter the arena of the Olympic space, of the Olympic programme, is potentially and quite likely a consequence where some countries decide they're not sending their athletes. And I would say what focuses the mind of the IOC is avoiding that situation, which isn't a situation that is unpredictable or unexpected, but actually a situation that's ever present at the Olympic Games.